Hello ladies and gentlemen, we have another banger of a humble bundle for game developers. This one is the Unreal Fantasy Bundle, obviously by the name. It is aimed at Unreal Engine developers, but as we will see throughout this video, it can be used in, uh, we'll say, a lesser form in a variety of different ways. So there are ways to get the content out of Unreal Engine and running in Blender, Godot, Unity, you name it. I've done videos on it in the past, but we'll cover it very briefly in this video as well. So here you can see one of the environments. This is the uh, castle environment. So it's uh, what it says on the tin. It is a castle like so. Uh, and by the way, you can export out of uh, Unreal Engine as simple as going up here, file, export all. Now this is a bit naive. It does the entire scene. And as we will see, it is a bit beefy in the results. Now here is one of the assets exported out into the Blender environment. As you can see, it's pretty much a one-for-one one recreation. This is exported out as GLB and imported into the Blender editor. I do have to warn you though, you're going to want to have lots of memory. It exports out as about a two to two and a half gigabyte GLB file. And when imported into my machine with uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM, well, here, let me just move the camera around so you get an idea of, uh, yeah. So it looks perfect. Just do be aware that if you're going to go this route, you're going to want a pretty beefy machine. But you can get these assets out of Unreal Engine and use them however you wish. So this is a really good demonstration of that running in Blender. So let's do a quick overview of the bundle itself before we get back to the hands-on portion. This is the Unreal Fantasy software bundle. As with all Humble bundles, it is organized into tiers. You buy a higher dollar value tier, you get all of the tiers below that. Uh, you decide how your money is allocated between Humble, the charity, the publisher, and if you so choose, and thank you so much for you do, to help support Game From Scratch. Now, this one is obviously a fantasy-themed bundle. It is from Yarawa. They uh, had some really nice bundles in the past. Again, all Unreal Engine focused, but as you see, you can use these assets mostly in other forms. I've done a video on exporting from Unreal Engine to to uh, Unity, Godot, and Blender. I will actually have a link to that down below if you want to go ahead and check that out. But we'll also show a little bit more of that in this video. All right, so at the $1 tier, what you're getting here is the Medieval Props Package, the Fantasy Weapons Pack, and the Modular Blacksmith. And then you go to the Median tier. So that's $1 uh, right there. This is the Average Price tier, which literally makes no sense right now because, okay, so look, $31.61 Canadian, about $24 USD, or the 20-item package for $33. So $31 or 33. So this is, I'm going to treat it as one single tier. So for 25 bucks USD, what you're getting here is the medieval street pack, the medieval castle environment, the forest environment, and the ancient cave ruins. We'll look at all of those quickly. We already saw the castle environment earlier on. They're all from the same creator, so they have a very consistent vibe to them. Uh, and then we're getting some more modular characters. When they say modular, they mean modular. We'll see that in just a second as well. So we've got the uh, dwarven collection, uh, blacksmith, scale warrior, and plate warrior, and druid. Then we have uh, the giant uh, we have a shaman here. Uh, then we've got uh, elves, a civilian, and a warrior, a uh, mage warrior. And then we've got a viking in the form of a Norse warrior and a Celtic druid. And then we've got a knight and a sorceress uh, and a female mercenary. And then we have male giants as well. Now, you're going to notice this isn't just one model. It's something that you can really uh, customize the heck out of. So we're going to see that. Uh, well, let's go look at that right now. Oh, no, we'll talk about how you get these first. So what you're getting here basically is a redemption key to Yarway's website. Uh, once you sign up, you go redeem your key on their site. Uh, it's a checkout code that makes everything free, and then they are available for download here as well. Now, the cool thing here that you'll notice is there is this little link at the top here called Epic Access. And basically, you just fill in the form, and uh, they will make all of your stuff available on the Unreal Engine Marketplace as well. So it took, uh, the last time it took a few days, uh, it, you know, it is an offline process, so it's not immediate, but all of the stuff you get here, you can download it off of Yarawa servers, but you can also download it from the Epic Game Store eventually, which is a very nice feature. All right, so let's go hands-on. Now, each asset in here downloads as a zip file. You extract out the zip file, and what you'll find is it is an Unreal project. So I'll show you how you can export these out to use it as like a component within your own project in just a second. But here we see this one. This is the Human Knight character running. Uh, I don't know why these two guys are floating off in space, but this is the demo level, and it gives you an idea of the visual quality of these characters, which I would put under the category of very good. You also see there's a diversity of them in both equipment uh, and in look, so you see here we got uh, a helmet going on, we got different armors going on, different colors going on. So there is a good solid diversity there. Uh, okay, not sure what that's going on about, but let's go here and check out another example here. So we've got uh, the morph controller here. It gives you an idea of the functionality that you've got with the character. So you've got a ton of different things you can do. So we can change out, we can put gore on this guy. 
uh, and we can change the amount of gore that we're going to see. We can change his muscularity. So you can see here, it's actually ripping through his clothing. So we're going a Hulk smash here. We can change his eyebrow positions. I don't think I can zoom here in the camera. Uh, we can change the eye position, so on. So you got all of these different sliders that are available, just like if you were in a character creator. So there is a ton of functionality in all of these characters as well. But don't forget, they've also got full blueprint controllers here. We're going to see that in just a second as well. So we're going to stop that little particular demonstration. You've also got it here for the outfits. So the outfits have a ton of configurability as well. Uh, so here, let's go see what we can do for the outfits. So you got a lot of, and don't forget, we've got a, a number of different uh, demos here. So we, we got not just this one character, we have a variety of them. But here you can get an idea of the outfit variety, the hairstyle variety for all of these particular characters. So there are just, um, you know, it's not just one character. It's quite literally a plethora. And then you've got a number of different genres of characters as well. Uh, and then we've got a demo of using it in the third-person environment, but uh, I'll show you that uh, elsewhere. So again, if you want to go ahead and export this out to another project, so for example here, I have this other project ready to go. You can just come in here, go to your content. You can right-click on that content or the very individual item that you want to do, and then you just click Migrate. And so you pick all the stuff that you want to bring over, you click OK, and then what you're going to do is just navigate to that other project, which I think is here. Yeah. All right, you go to the content folder of the other project, and you export it over. So this is how you're going to get the assets out of uh, Unreal Engine and into other projects. Although there is a plugin that makes this experience so much better. I'll probably cover that in a separate video. I know I've been teasing that for a while, but uh, yeah. So. Let's just wait for a sec for this to package over, and then I'll show you these assets in action uh, in your own game. All right, so our export continued over here. We're going to take a look. So there is our NPC character over here. It has been fully exported across. Uh, and now we're in the standard uh, third-person blueprint uh, demo, like so. All right, so what we're going to do is just go here, find the player start. Uh, should be around here somewhere. Let me just search. Player start. Let's grab that guy right there. So what you're just going to do is pick the game mode override right here. Select down, go to the blueprint third person game mode night like so. And let's go check our scene. And now there is our character integrated uh, into the scene. And realistically, that is all that is required. So uh, definitely nice in that regard. You could also bring your characters in. It's very simple. You can bring it in as a blueprint. For example, here is the character night. Uh, so third person night, drop that into the scene like so and you're done. So uh, very easy to work with and integrates nicely into your scene. And that is how you migrate from one project to another. So that is one of the characters in this pack. Now let's go take a look at some of the other environments. So here we are in the forest environment. It's pretty straightforward and probably exactly what you would expect. It's a forest environment. Uh, pretty much what the name says on the tin. It's a consistent art style to the, all the other packs, which is pretty much realistic, but a slightly cartoonish tinge. I don't know what you'd call that. I don't think cartoonish tinge is the right word, but it's got that Witcher vibe to it, if you know what I mean. If you can put a word to what I'm trying to say, I would appreciate it in the comments down below. But it's a good looking environment for sure. Although I do find the trees are a little bit more bendy than I would ever have imagined. So other than that, Definitely uh, a pretty pack and, you know, what you would be expecting from a forest environment. And here we have the overview map for the same thing. So you can basically see you got puddles, landscapes, terrain. Over here, you got some rocks in the environment. Everything is uh, prefab module blueprints ready to drag and drop into your world. You have a variety of different trees and other foliage to make up said world. So yeah, that is, again, a pretty straightforward asset pack. Next up, we have one of my favorite assets. This is the Medieval Village Street Pack, and it is exactly what it says. It is a medieval village. You got a number of uh, buildings around it here. We've got different kind of uh, outdoor tarp areas. We've got a clock tower um, and so on. So it's all the stuff you need to create a village type environment. I just really like the uh, artistic aesthetic on their demo level here. And I got to demonstrate something else with this one. So I showed you earlier on that you can export this guy out. Basically, uh, just select the object you wish. So for example, the map, I could go here and I could say uh, asset actions and export this out. 
uh, and then I could pick a variety of different file formats. So I could go GLB, which is what I did to bring it into uh, the Godot game engine earlier on, and that works almost flawlessly. There's going to be a few catches you're going to see. For example, the terrain doesn't come out, and I found that the roof here all had their metal maps like really cranked up, so it made everything shiny. But other than that, it came out pretty much one for one. Another option you actually have, and I covered this in my video, which again will be linked down below, uh, you can also use the Unreal to Unity uh, plugin. This is available on the Unity Asset Store as a paid plugin. The next time it goes on sale, I'm going to do a video about it. Then for the environmental environment pack, we have the, I think it was Ancient Caves pack here. So you got four environment packs here, plus a props pack for creating your environments. Everything here, again, is modular, so you can use just the bits you like uh, to create this uh, pack uh, for doing caves and cliffside uh, stuff. Good set of biomes here for fantasy. Again, it's got this uh, realistic but slightly cartoonish art style here like again reminds me mostly of witcher and i don't know what it would called be called if you've got a name for it let me know down below but i do like the art style of all four of the packs uh and then again there is a prop pack i'm not going to look at today and to conclude the hands-on portion, let's do one last character. This is one of the dwarves pack. This is the plate mail dwarves. I do not know why by default they are green. That is a very interesting artistic choice they went with. I don't think I've ever encountered green dwarves before. Uh, but again, you can see the character quality is very high. There is a large amount of modularity. Again, we've got multiple different armor sets for the dwarves, so you should be able to get uh, a good variety of dwarven assets out of this one. And again, everything is highly modular. So we got the morph controller for changing out the dwarf itself. Body controller here. Uh, so let's let's go check out the morph controller. And let's run this example right here. So you get an idea of the kind of things you can do. You can change the muscularity of this dwarf. It's, it's very uh, minor there. Can I change the color here? So I know you can change the color. Here, let, let's go back to the other example. And let's check out the uh, body and see what we can do with this one's settings. But as you can see from the hands-on portion, uh, there is a ton of configurability of all these things. They are driven by uh, the blueprint controllers for them. They also all have third-person character controllers, so you can drop these into a game and actually just start controlling them immediately. All right, so here are a variety of body types. Yeah, so you see here we've got uh, different color options here. So we got... Um, purple dwarves, blue dwarves, uh, you know, uh, Caucasian dwarves. And then for some reason, we have a variety of green dwarves as well. They, they really went all in on that green thing. Interestingly, the, the outfits aren't in this particular demo. Uh, but as you see, everything is very modular in nature. You can really switch things up, create a variety of different characters with different hairstyles, different beards, and so on. So it gives you, it's not just like one character. It's just going to give you like a, a wide variety as a result of these. And again, everything is scriptable using blueprints. So ladies and gentlemen, that was a quick hands-on with the Unreal Fantasy Software Bundle. A nice collection of, uh, let's say, environment and character models out there. A ton of controllability around all of them. They're basically ready to drag and drop into your game. But as we also saw in this video, and I covered it really extensively in this video in the past, uh, you can get these out into Unreal, Blender, or Unity. It's not going to be a nice one-for-one -one conversion, but do be sure to check out that video. I will link it down below so you can see how you can get these assets into other game engines. But if you are a Unity developer, sorry, an Unreal Engine developer, this one is probably a, a great pickup for you so long as it fits your art style uh, and you are looking for some fantasy assets. They're really high quality quality assets and they are very uh, programmatic or procedural in nature so they're very flexible in what they can do uh, so let me know what you think of the Unreal Fantasy Software Bundle do be sure to check out that video on how to get stuff from Unreal into other engines and also stay tuned at some point in time I'm going to cover both a plugin that make Unreal Engine just working with assets nicer also I will cover uh, that uh, Unity to Unreal Engine plugin in more detail in a dedicated video but you can see it in action in that other video I linked earlier. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later and goodbye.